And then it is in this video, we're going to be looking at experiments that were carried out by Ash and all the variables that affect conformity. And this is for your A-level psychology. Don't forget, if you want flashcards and questions, go with this for absolutely free. Then they're all waiting for you over on my website. We will first look at Ash's research conducted in 1951, the famous conformity study. AIM. Solomon Ash conducted this laboratory experiment to investigate the extent to which individuals conform to the opinions of a majority group when faced with a unanimous but clearly incorrect judgment. Procedure. Participants, 123 American males, were asked to complete a simple perceptual task, comparing the length of lines. They were placed in a group between six and eight people with confederates, actors who knew the true purpose of the study. In each trial, participants were shown a standard line, shown here in the diagram X, and three comparison lines, shown as A, B and C and were asked to say out loud which of the comparison lines was the same length as the standard line. We can see here examples of the two cards that the participants were shown. On the left, X, the standard line, and on the second card shown here on the right hand side, the three comparison lines, A, B and C. Hopefully you can see from this that it's very clear which of the comparison lines matches with the standard line. One of the comparison lines was always clearly identical in length to the standard. Confederates consistently chose the wrong line as the match. Participants were tested individually and the true participant usually responded last or next to last. During the experiment, every participant engaged in 18 trials during which the Confederates consistently provided the same incorrect response in 12 of these trials, identified as critical trials. Findings. The experiment revealed a significant level of conformity, with genuine participants conforming to the incorrect majority opinion approximately 36.8% of the time. 75% of participants conformed to the incorrect judgment at least once, agreeing with the majority despite their own correct perception. 25% of participants consistently resisted conformity, never providing an incorrect answer. The control group demonstrated minimal conformity, with less than 1% of participants given an incorrect response, showing how clear the correct answer was. Following the experiment, Ash conducted interviews with his participants to explore the reasons behind their conformity. Many participants acknowledged that they recognised the incorrectness of their responses, but chose to conform to the group either to assimilate or out of fear of ridicule. This shows that participants conform primarily due to normative social influence and the inclination to conform to group norms. Conclusion. Asher's experiment demonstrated the powerful influence of social pressure on individual behaviour in decision making. Participants were willing to disregard their own senses and conform to the group consensus, even when it was clearly incorrect. This study highlighted the importance of social influence and conformity in shaping behaviour and attitudes within groups. Ash went on to carry out further research to understand how different factors may increase or decrease levels of conformity. Group size. Would the size of the group make a difference? Ash ran variations of the experiment, changing the number of confederates in the group between 1 and 15. This meant the group size was between 2 and 16 people. Remember that one of the group would be a genuine participant and the rest would be confederates. The results showed that conformity did increase with group size 
but only to a point. When three Confederates were present, on average participants conformed 31.8% of the time. Increasing the group size further, so little increase in this. Levels of conformity remain consistent. Unanimity. Would the presence of a non-conforming other make a difference? In another variation, a non-conforming confederate, a dissenter, was introduced. They disagreed with the other confederates and gave either the correct answer or a different incorrect answer. This led to the genuine participant conforming less often. Conformity dropped from 32% to 5.5%. Even when the dissenter disagreed with the confederates and the genuine participant, conformity levels still dropped significantly. The genuine participants conformed around 9% of the time. This shows how powerful a unanimous majority can be. Also the huge impact that even one other non-conformer can have. Task difficulty. Would the difficulty of the task make a difference? In another variation, Ash made the task more difficult. The standard line and the comparison lines were more similar and it became harder to make a correct match. This led to increased conformity. When the correct answer isn't obvious, it's understandable that people will look to others for assurance and to check whether their judgment is correct. This is informational social influence. These variables help us understand that conformity is not a simple one-size-fits-all phenomenon. Instead, it can be influenced by several factors, including the makeup and size of the group, the unanimity of the group's opinion, and the nature of the task or situation at hand. Now let's have a look at the evaluation of Asher's work. Research support exists for Asher's conformity study. Lucas et al. 2006 conducted a study where participants were tasked with completing maths problems of varying difficulties. They found that participants were more likely to conform to the answers provided by others when faced with more difficult calculations. This demonstrates that task difficulty indeed impacts levels of conformity, supporting the findings of Asher's work. However, Asher's study doesn't adequately consider individual differences. Lucas et al. 2006 also discovered that individuals with stronger math skills were less likely to conform. This suggests that personal characteristics such as skill level can significantly influence conformity levels. The ASH study was conducted in a laboratory setting with an artificial task and situation, lacking mundane realism. Participants were aware they were part of an experiment potentially leading to demand characteristics affecting their behaviour. The low stakes nature of the task matching lines lacked a personal element, unlike real life situations where conformity pressures may be more salient. All participants in the study were American men, overlooking potential differences in conformity levels among different demographics. Research suggests that gender and cultural factors play a role in conformity levels. For instance, women may be more concerned with social acceptance and cultural norms can influence conformity tendencies. The generalizability of Asher's findings to other demographics and cultures is therefore potentially limited. Let's take this discussion a little further. Ethical concerns arise from Asher's study due to participant deception and stress induction. Participants were misled about the true nature of the study, undermining informed consent. They were told the study was investigating visual perception instead of conformity. Additionally, they were placed in stressful situations where they had to disagree with confederates potentially causing discomfort or psychological harm. 
Remember when discussing ethical concerns and issues within research, it doesn't impact on the validity of the findings. Ouch! This is when somebody is, I'll explain scratches. 